Hi, I'm going to make a couple of videos here on how to summarize categorical or qualitative data. I guess I ought to type that here. Categorical or qualitative data. Um, two words that mean exactly the same thing. I have a couple of videos already, but they're using an old version of Excel. So I'm doing an update here with the shiny brand new Excel 2016 because there are a couple of things that look a little bit different. And I show you a couple of ways that you can make frequency distributions with qualitative data and then I'll come back and make another video with quantitative data. Now the first way, let's just look at this little data set here. This is a little uh, made up data set with 300 restaurants in the data set here and for each restaurant we imagine we give a survey to the customers. Uh, how do they rate the meal at different restaurants and what was the meal price? Okay, so let's first focus on this quality rating. This is a categorical or qualitative variable because it's a word. It's also what we would call an ordinal variable because these ratings have an obvious order from poor, average, good, very good, excellent, for example. So there are two ways that we can make a frequency distribution, a table to count up how frequently people rated restaurants in each of these categories. Now, in order to do this the first way, I'm going to use the COUNTIF function, COUNTIF function, just write that, type that there for you. That's the first method we'll do. In order to make a, count, a frequency distribution using the COUNTIF function, we, we need a list of all the categories. Now, one way you can do that is just to go through and look through the data and make sure you have a list of all the categories. Is there a poor in there? I don't see it, but maybe there is one. One easy way to get a list of all the categories is to select the whole column and go to data filter. Now there's a little drop down arrow here. Click the drop down arrow and what the drop down arrow does is it lists all the categories in that column for you. And you see there isn't a poor. I know it's very small there, but the only three categories are good, very good, and excellent. So now what this also allows us to do, the, the filter part is, instead of selecting all, we could just select the good ones if we wanted to, okay? But um, I just wanted to know what, what was a list of all the categories. So categories or rating, we need a title here. We need to know what the categories are so they go from good and you need to make sure they're spelled exactly the way they are on the, in the list, otherwise this won't work very good and excellent. Now the COUNTIF function, what we want to do is count up how frequently, so frequency, how frequently each of these ratings was given to these 300 restaurants. So <clears throat> we use the function equals COUNTIF, open parentheses, and we want to tell it where the data is. Now one way that you can tell it where the data is is just to highlight, right? Or we could type it B2 colon. Instead of B2, uh, it's going to go down to 301, B301. How do we know that? Well, because we looked a minute ago and there were 300 of these restaurants and the first row has the titles. So count if B2 to B301, we're telling it where to look, comma. Now we're going to tell it what to look for. Look for the word good and count all those up, okay? And now we can hit close parentheses, enter. And it tells us that there are 84 goods. And we can do the same thing here. We can type equals count if, tell it the range, and very good. Or we can copy the formula down. However, if we copy that formula down, there's going to be a problem. Now look at where the data is. It's B2 to B301. Um, if we drag that formula down, we're going to get wrong answers. Remember, there's supposed to be 300 restaurants here. Let's add these answers up. Okay, we actually get 300. 
Normally this is going to cause a problem though because when you drag that formula down, instead of looking at B2 to B301, now it's looking at B3 to B302. And that's going to cause errors in most cases. So what you want to do before you drag a formula down, you want to look at it carefully and look at the things that you want to change and look at the things that you don't want to change. Here we don't want this range B2 to B301 to change. The easiest way to do that is to put dollar signs on the B, the 2, the B, and the 301. And you can do that on the PC. I'm not sure about the Mac, but on the PC by hitting the, hitting the F4 key. F4. What that does is it changes this range that it's looking at from what's called a relative reference, which means as you move the formula, it's going to move where it's looking to an absolute reference. It's always going to look in this range, absolutely, B2 to B301, it's not going to change it at all. The E7, that's pointing to the word good. When we drag this formula down, we do want that to change because, whoops, we do want that to change because we want it to look not always at good, but we want it to look at very good and count those up. We want it to look at excellent and count those up. So now when we drag the formula down, it's still looking at B2 to B301, but here it's counting up the very goods. B2 to B301, same place, it's counting up the excellence, right? Now you want to always, when you're doing a, a table like this, you always want to total them up and make sure that you get the right total. It's a, the best way there is to double check and make sure that you haven't made a mistake. So this is one way to make a frequency distribution, and generally, you know, just to pretty this up a little bit, I'll make the titles bold and the total bold. If you have an ordinal variable where there's an obvious order to these, good, very good, and excellent, put them in that order. It just makes the uh, table a little bit easier to read. Another way you can do this is with a pivot table, and it's a lot quicker. It's a lot quicker. Let me show you how that works. With a pivot table, you need to make sure that, like we have here, the data that you're interested in is in a column, and it has a title to the column. So we're going to use the pivot table tool to do, uh, to do exactly the same thing we just did here. Select the data you want to use and go to Insert Pivot Table. And there are a lot of options here that you can play with. I just hit, I just hit OK. Right? I don't need to mess with those options. Now look over here on the right side. You see, we just selected one variable called quality rating. If we want to make the same frequency table that we just made, just take the word quality rating and with the, your left mouse button, click, drag it down to rows. And you see how that listed the three options there. And now take the quality rating and drag it down to the values. And here it counts up how many of them there are. Now, two problems with this frequency distribution. First, since I, I selected the whole column, there were some blanks there. Um, so Excel put the word blank here, but didn't tell me didn't tell me how many there were. Um, there really weren't any blanks that we should be worried about. So we want to get rid of that. The second thing is we want to reorder these categories into good first, very good, and then excellent. And the way to do that on a pivot table is to right click a category, go down to the word move, and you can say move up, move down, move to end, or move to beginning. We can either move it to beginning or move it up. And we want to move excellent down, to so move down. We just want to get rid of that blank. And here's what I always do when I've made a pivot table. I highlight the bottom information. Don't highlight the top, these two labels here, because there's actually some programming contained in those labels that we don't want to copy. And I just copy the bottom part and I copy it to a new sheet where I can make it prettier. Right? I can adjust the column widths. I can type a title like rating. I can type frequency. 
which is the proper label for these uh, the counts of how often these things happen, we can delete this blank this column. I'm sorry, this row that has the blanks in it, and, and we can pretty it up any way we want. A pet peeve most people who use Excel have say grand total is meaningless. It's just it's just total. I don't know why we need to, to have have the word grand total there. So that's the way to accomplish the same thing we did before with the COUNTIF function by using this pivot table function. It's a little quicker once you get used to it, but it's a little weird to get used to, I, I admit. Now, what else do we want to do with this? We might want to graph this. So we might want to highlight this. If you want to graph this information, one tip, do not highlight the total when you're making either a pie graph or a bar graph. That's going to make your pie graph or your bar graph look very weird and very wrong. So just hi here, highlight the, the labels and the actual counts, but not the total. And go to Insert and then whatever graph type you want. Say a bar graph here. It's not a bad bar graph. We probably just want to give it a better table than frequency, like ratings of restaurants, something like that. Or we could make a pie graph out of the same information. So I'm going to insert. Click on the picture of the pie graph. That's not too bad, except we probably want some labels here of what's going on. So let's see. How about right click add data labels? Not too bad. Again, we'd probably want to give this a better title. We probably want to label what these are, not just the frequencies, but we want um, the series, let's see, the category name perhaps here. Yeah. So if you want to edit things on graphs, the easiest way to kind of get to the options you're looking for is to just right click on the thing that you're looking at. Um, and then go to some of these options, format, format data labels, uh, change series chart type, play around and look, at, look for the option that you want to do. To change this title, just like double click on the word and keep clicking until it lets you start typing and, and change something. So, restaurant ratings. And that's the basic idea. That's, that's really about the extent of it, what you can do when it comes to categorical data or qualitative data. And the only other thing that's really common that you might want to do is to calculate percent frequency out of these. And to do that, you could just say, you know, equals 84 divided by 300 times 100 to get that percent, right? Now, again, if you want to drag that formula down, we want it to always divide by 300, the number in C6. So hit F4. And then we can drag that down and label that percent frequency. Just two final things that I would prefer that you do that are probably good ideas here are whenever you do a percent frequency or a frequency, make sure you do a total. So we can click the auto sum button up here and then hit enter just to make sure that those percents add up to 100. Make sure the frequencies add up to the number of observations that you have. The other thing that I would probably do a little bit differently here is instead of telling us the frequencies, in a pie chart, I really prefer, rather than seeing frequencies, to see the percent frequencies. So as I was mentioning before, just right click on the image of the pie chart. Format data labels is what we want to look at. And instead of value, let's un uncheck the value box and check the percentage box. I think that's a little bit better. Now in the next video, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this other variable in this data set, the meal price. So we're going to look at quantitative data. How do you treat that a little bit differently? And we're going to use the pivot table tool again, and we'll make a graph called a histogram. So join me for that next video.